What is family law arbitration? If you're a solicitor or a client who's interested in finding out a bit more about arbitration in a family law context, then this is the vlog for you. Hi, I'm Caitlin Jenkins, the family law vlogger. So today's vlog is about arbitration in the family law world. Arbitration has been going in various other jurisdictions, but it was introduced to the jurisdiction of England and Wales in a family law context by my Mills and Reeve colleague, Suzanne Kingston, who's one of the initiators of it and is now a trainer for those who want to be arbitrators in England and Wales. So arbitration, uh, first thing to think about is there are two types of arbitrators. Some people are trained in both, but generally people are either a children arbitrator, so can arbitrate in family law matters relating to private law children cases, or they're arbitrators on the financial aspects of separation and divorce. Some people have trained as both, but otherwise you need to be careful to make sure you're getting an arbitrator that's trained in the appropriate one that you need for your scenario. The other background point on arbitration is that it does have a statutory basis, like other arbitrations in England and Wales, so it's under the Arbitration Act, so it has a statutory uh, basis. It's been very much supported by the uh, judiciary, by the judges in England and Wales, who've made very clear that they regard it as a very good thing and something that parties will be held to. We'll come back to that. And then also it's regulated by the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, which is a, an England and Wales wide organisation that regulates arbitrators more broadly in the jurisdiction. And there's a sub, sub, effectively a subcommittee of the Chartered Institute, which is the Institute of Family Law Arbitrators, IFLA, which deals with the regulation of and the administration of family law arbitrators in England. So what is arbitration in the family law context and what can it be used for? Taking the example of a finance case, if you as a solicitor or two solicitors for two clients appoint an arbitrator, then think of the arbitration process as a bit like the financial court process. So there'll be an initial stage, which will be disclosure, perhaps a directions hearing, a bit like a first appointment. Then there might be a second interlocutory hearing to look at valuation evidence, those sorts of issues. And then ultimately, there'll be a final hearing or things will be dealt with on submission, so on paper without a final hearing, and a judgment will be given, which is called an arbitration award. Now, you could, of course, during an arbitration process, agree that you wanted some sort of a private FDR type stage to put into it, but that would be done with somebody other than your arbitrator. So leaving that to one side for, for now, if you uh, instruct and appoint an arbitrator, you're talking about disclosure stage, valuation evidence stage, and then a final hearing or submissions, and then thereafter an award, which is effectively a judgment as you would get from a judge. How do you appoint an arbitrator? Well, one of the advantages of arbitration is you can choose who your judge is. Obviously, you need to agree that with the other party or with the other solicitor, but you can choose an arbitrator who is local to you or not local to you, depending on the circumstances, who has particular expertise in the particular field. So for example, if you have a case that involves complex business structures, then you might want to go to a solicitor or barrister who is an arbitrator on financial matters, who has particular expertise in that field. And so you know that they will have not only the theoretical qualifications, but also the uh, experience to actually deal with a case in a way that would be helpful to both parties and get a solution. You can appoint an arbitrator either by choosing the arbitrator because you know they happen to be trained or from looking at the IFLA website, the Institute of Family Law Arbitrators website, or if you can't agree the appointment of your arbitrator, but you do both definitely decide you want to arbitrate, then you can file the necessary paperwork with IFLA and they will actually appoint an appropriately trained and local IFLA arbitrator for you if you can't decide who it should be. So for example, I'm an arbitrator on the financial aspects and I'm a solicitor arbitrator. What is the arbitration process? That will to some extent depend on the case and also on the arbitrator. What I tend to do when solicitors contact me about possibly being an arbitrator in their case is to invite both solicitors to summarise for me on a no obligation basis what the background situation is and then I have a telephone call with the solicitors only where I understand a little bit more about what the case is about, understand what expertise they're seeking, and we sort of scope out what the case might involve. Then at that stage, if the solicitors and the clients are happy to proceed with the appointment of the arbitrator, then I would invite them to fill in the actual arbitration form that you can find on the IFLA website. And it's only once that form has been signed by the parties and the solicitors and the arbitrator has then accepted the arbitration that the actual arbitration process begins.
Now, once the arbitration process begins, both parties are bound by it. So it is binding arbitration in that sense. It's not like mediation, which is voluntary, or collaborative law, which is voluntary. It is once, it's, once you've committed to it, then you have to go through all the way through with that arbitrator who will make an award, which is the equivalent of a judgment. And you should, or the clients should, be expect to be held to it. Yes, the solicitors will then need to record that arbitration award into, a, into an order that the judge will have to approve by consent through the courts. But the courts have made very clear that if it's an arbitration award and that's made clear, then they will, they will hold the parties to it and will approve those, those orders without too much difficulty. So arbitration is a binding process and that's one of the things that distinguishes it from mediation, from collaborative law, from, uh, from a voluntary exchange of information and, and negotiating through solicitors. The advantage of that, of course, is that you can be bound. You can have a process that doesn't involve, unfortunately, the delays and the cost of a court process and the vagaries of having to deal with the judiciary who, through no fault of their own, are under a lot of pressure in terms of time and other cases and so may not actually, when you get to court, particularly for negotiation hearings, have that much time to devote to a case. A private arbitrator will have the time to and the incentive to focus on the case and make sure that they give good time and therefore good quality judgment to the issues before them, whether that's an interim situation or in terms of a final hearing or considering a final submissions and the writing of the arbitration award. Overall, therefore, arbitration is effectively having a private court process with a private judge. You don't have to pay a court fee for starting that process, but you do pay the arbitrator. Most arbitrators will give either a fixed fee or a staged fee for the payment of for the arbitration process. And that's something I would scope out with the, with the solicitors and the clients in that free, no obligation conversation initially up front. And we'll, won't usually release their arbitration award until those fees have been paid. Usually the arbitrator's fee is divided equally between the parties, but other things can be agreed, but that's the starting point. As always with the Family Law Vlog, if you're considering arbitration for yourself or for your clients, then you should take some more detailed and specialist advice on arbitration as a process and whether it's suitable for you or the case that your clients have got. My details and those of other colleagues at Mills and Reeve who have it, and all of whom have experience of arbitration and indeed many of whom are trained as arbitrators are at the end of this vlog.